Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So we are going to be talking tonight about three big keto mistakes. And no matter where you are in keto, it's coming back to the basics that that helps again and again and again. We're also going to take your questions, your specific questions, and see if we can help you there. The first thing that I want you to do is I want you to look down at your fingerprints. Everybody, whatever you're doing, if you're driving, don't let go of the wheel. But if you look down at your fingerprints, you will understand that nobody in this world has the same fingerprints as you. You are a unique individual. And that means what we're going to be talking about is patterns. And it might be that there's something about you that's a little bit different. So what we're going to say is designed to help the majority of people. But we understand that not every metabolism is the same. Not every person's level of insulin resistance is the same. And some of the things that we may say to you may seem a little bit extreme, but they are designed to help as many people as possible. And that's why we're telling you. We're not telling you things that aren't proven. We're not telling you things that we're pulling out of thin air. We're telling you things that we think are going to make a difference. Now, we've been running this group now for... I'm guessing it's over about a month. Yes. Yeah, it's grown so fast and it's awesome. But yeah, it's been about a month. And and the group has grown to over seven thousand members in that period of time. We're not counting. We're almost at eight. We're almost at eight thousand. Okay, yeah. um, that's pretty good. It shows you where I, you know, I've been. Um, and we have turn this into a kind of different kind of group because we care about your results. And we also care there's a lot of bad information out there. And on a daily basis, it may not be really popular, but on a daily basis, Kim and I are uh, deleting things that are just not true. People trying to sell garbage that isn't going to help you. People putting up recipes that they encourage you to follow, even though they will knock you out of ketosis or gain weight. Today, someone tried to be helpful and posted a recipe with um, carrots, honey, and orange juice. Oh, gosh. And uh, yeah, you never saw that. Because we take these things down. They meant well, but they just don't know. So it's been our job to kind of help you along that way. And... um, And Lori wants to know why I can't see you, because this is a webinar where you see the screen, but you don't see us, okay? That's why you don't see us. You're not going to see us. It's not kind of a webinar where we're up on the screen chatting with you. Um, Perhaps another time, but um, just the difference between how good Kim looks and how bad I look would probably be too shocking for the system, so we'll just leave it like this. There's a lot of information. We're going to dive in and um, pay attention because we answer questions really one time. And if you ask a question after it's been asked, we're going to tell you to please review the webinar. So please give us your attention. Turn off phones, text messaging, get off of Facebook, get in here, and let's go. Okay. So, Kim, why don't you say a little bit about yourself, then I'll say a little bit about myself, and we'll jump in. All right. So, I'm Kim Howerton. Hello. Uh, I have been a coach for about a decade, and I've been specifically a keto coach for about a year since I myself went into the state of ketosis and really ended my lifelong struggle with my weight and with my food addictions. And once I got into ketosis and found it such an amazing state, I um, couldn't do anything else but dedicate myself to bringing this to the world because it's like you know you discover the you discover the best thing in the world. You want everyone else to have it. 
Um, I live in Berkeley, California, um, and uh, that's that's the basics about me. I spend my time talking about ketosis. And my name is Harlan Tilstein. Actually, um, I got started in ketosis after complete frustration with my weight. Um, I was at my ideal weight at 50. I was doing yoga twice a day plus weightlifting three times a week. I was in fantastic shape. Then a yoga injury kept me from doing yoga, and uh, my weight started to go up and started to go up and started to go up. And what I didn't understand is that as my body was changing, I had become really insulin resistant. And I went to doctor after doctor, and I mean, the things that they told me, they sent me from one nutritionist to another, and I was just absolutely shocked at how little doctors knew about nutrition. Um, and some of them admitted it. Some of them didn't admit it. And finally, I discovered keto and I started losing weight. I'll tell you a secret. My body stalled and was in a stall for a very long period of time. And I came to the understanding that keto is more a way of life that I was using for weight loss, and I started paying attention to other things. Um, and the most amazing thing stop, started happening when I stopped paying attention to my weight and looking for other things going on in my body. For example, pants that I were not able to close. Um, I can no longer wear anymore because if I walk down the street, uh, people are going to be laughing in shock, whatever. I could literally take pants that didn't close on me before and slide them up and down without ever um, uh, buttoning them or unbuttoning them. Um, I I'm noticing the changes on a daily basis, plus all of the people are commenting. So a lot of people um, are, are paying attention only to the scale. And let me tell you, the scale is the least accurate way of making measurements. Since then, I've been dedicated to helping people. I actually had a weight loss clinic um, in the years 2000 uh, to 2003. It was really a motivation clinic. We used hypnosis to help people. I saw hundreds of people every single day in the clinic. We helped tens of thousands of people lose weight. Uh, and I just only wonder today that if, if we had a do-over, I would go back then and put everybody on keto. We just didn't know about it then. Um, and we would have seen just fantastic results. So we are here, Kim and I, to help you guys grow. And um, we are going to take your questions over on the right-hand side, you should see a box that says questions. You can uh, put your questions in there. I will keep my eye on them, and we will go. And for Lori, who complained that she couldn't see us, well, now you can. But this is your last opportunity because they're <laughs> about to disappear. All right. So very, very briefly, what is the ketosis diet? You're probably familiar with the concept of the food pyramid. I found out today in doing some research and studying that the food pyramid that we are most common with was actually designed by Senator George McGovern. You may remember him for his failed presidential run. And Senator McGovern designed what is commonly known as the USDA food pyramid. In it, based on absolutely no science of the time, but open to pressure from the, um, the grain industry, the cereal industry especially, and the dairy industry, he recommended that we get at least 60% of our daily diet from carbohydrates. Now, today, anybody who's remotely involved in keto would go, well, there's a real surefire formula for failure, but that's what people thought because the food pyramid was designed to keep certain industries happy. It was not designed to help people health-wise or certainly not to lose weight. So this pyramid 
down at the bottom. It starts with the basics, which would be uh, meats, poultry, fish, um, and uh, shellfish, uh, bacon, fatty meats, which normally we would shy away from, are all welcome on the keto diet. The next level up, eggs and dairy and oils. The next level up, the different vegetables. And Kim has posted a very, very detailed uh, list of vegetables that are good and, and listing them and so forth. And then sparingly, nuts and berries. Down at the bottom, Kim, why don't you run us through the things that we should not be having at all? <laughs> all righty. So the things that you really want to avoid completely on keto are breads and grains, which includes pastas, rices. You also want to avoid corn, also a grain, uh, any sugars. And sugar comes in many forms. Um, that would be uh, things like honey, uh, table sugar, agave, things that act as sugar in your body, um, any milk. So you can have high fat dairy like cheeses and cream, but you can't have milk. Um, it is very high in sugars. Also, you want to avoid beans of any type that is not a green bean. Okay. Now, some people make sure that we're listing rice here, but all grains, all grains, yeah. even the ones that are considered healthy grains, like brown rice. Um, I don't see potatoes on here. Uh, yeah, no potatoes. Sweet yeah, potatoes. I mean, these are no. Go ahead. I was going to say the people that invented the term healthy whole grains are those same cereal people <laughs> that you mentioned earlier. Um, there's no grains at all and very little fruit other than berries allowed on the ketogenic diet. These are the things when people start going and making mistakes, we see invariably that some of these things creep in from the bottom. For example, the true story, I've shared it before, going to a restaurant, they had sugar-free sorbet for dessert. And I called the person over because they had green tea sorbet and it was sugar free. And they had coconut sorbet and it was sugar free. And I said, okay, well, they're not just putting coconut or green tea and freezing it. They've got to be doing something else. And I said, okay, what's the sweetener? And they said, agave. Now, agave, as far as your body is concerned, agave which is already in liquid form, is probably faster absorbed than, than even pure cane sugar. Um, it indeed is. And therefore, when you see sugar-free, sugar-free does not mean automatically you can have it. You may be cruising into trouble. So this is the basic pyramid, but we're going to understand why, as I've seen some of the questions, people are having difficulties, we want to eliminate those difficulties for you. Next, mistake number one is you aren't tracking what you eat. So for example, we tell everybody who joins the group that they should be using MyFitnessPal. You need to set up your macros and you need to track every single day. The most common mistake we find is that people aren't aware of what they're eating. They think they're on keto, but when you ask them to track, you find that they're not. <laughs> so Kim, everybody should have your pen ready because this is the one we get the most questions about. Kim is going to go through the way you should divide up your, um, what we call your macros. Macros stand for macronutrients. How you should divide them up, how you should calculate, and we're going to show you in my fitness pal exactly where to set that up. So go ahead and tell us what people should have as their settings. 
All right. So there are three main macronutrients, or basically there are three. There's fat, there's protein, and there's carbohydrates. Now, I across the board just set carbohydrates at a level that is under 20 grams a day. That is a safe level of carbohydrates to remain in ketosis for the vast majority of the population. Um, and so that's kind of just an easy across the board one. Your level of protein is gonna scale with your lean body mass. And you're like, what is lean body mass? I don't know what my lean, I have no lean body mass. I'm a fat person. No, we all have lean body mass. It means the non-fat portion of your body, the, the not, not including the body fat. Um, and there are various ways to test that, but there's also a shortcut if you don't know that number. And the shortcut is this that as a woman, it's a little different than a man, but I will lay it out as a, uh, as a woman, uh, you're gonna start with about 45 grams of protein if you're about five feet tall. And um, you're, gonna, you're gonna jump from there, depending for every additional inch of height you have, you're gonna add 2.3 grams of protein. So, uh, for an example, I am five foot nine, um, which means I get about 66 grams of protein on average a day. Um, if you're five feet tall, you're going to be more around 45 grams. Um, now, for men, you're going to start slightly higher. You're going to start at about 50 grams, just a little bit more. And if you're athletic, you're going to add a bit more um, flexibility in terms of how much protein you need because when you're an athletic person, when you're in a muscle building state, protein is one of those things that helps with that state. So you're gonna multiply that number that you got by 1.2 if you're a woman and 1.4 if you're a man. Um, so, and that's gonna be your range. So if I suddenly became a power lifter I would potentially eat about 100 and I'm sorry, I would potentially eat about 75 grams of protein. So it's not a huge amount more. Um, in our group, I'll put this calculation up because I know it's some math and math is not everyone's favorite detail at all times, but that's how you come up with your protein. Um, once you have your protein set, people are then question, what should my fat be? Well, the ketogenic diet is anywhere above 65% fat as a diet, um, for, as a percentage of your total calories. So um, funnily enough, the gram number for 65% uh, is about the same gram number when you've got your protein set right. So um, if I were eating 66 grams of protein a day, I never want to go below 66 grams of fat that would mean I'm at about a 65% uh, ratio. It's like 5% carbs, 65% uh, uh, fat, and now my math is escaping me. But, um, but from there, you're gonna go up. So I usually eat more than 66 grams of fat in a day because I'm scaling my amount of fat with my amount of hunger. I'm trying not to be hungry. I'm trying to be satisfied with my food. So you're just going to scale that. That fat becomes a lever to make you feel happy with your food. So um, generally for me, that means I'm eating somewhere above 100 grams of fat. I'm eating between 110 and 160 grams of fat, depending on the day, hungry day, not hungry day. It's going to go up and down. Harlan, that is how I calculate macros. Okay, hold on. I had Microsoft. Had a pop up. There we go. I had my pop up and I got rid of it. Okay, so um, here I'm looking at um, a, a a day that I had a a while ago, um, and there you see I had forty four um, forty four grams of protein, one hundred twenty five grams of fat and three grams of net carbs. Um, or there's, there's an argument whether you should be uh, counting carbs or net carbs, subtracting the fiber and sugar alcohols. Um, we see here that um, 
my actual carbs that day was 18. If we want to take a look at today's carbs, we go to my fitness pal. And this is how I have mine set up. It's calculated my calories for the day. We don't pay all that much attention to it. 5% of carbs is 27 grams. That can actually be a little bit lower. Um, 80% of my calories should be from fat and 15% from protein. Do those look okay, Kim? Those look super duper. I, I, I'm also tend to be 15, 80, and 5, um, and those look great. Okay. So if we look at what I've done today, okay, this is today, Wednesday. For breakfast, I had Bulletproof Coffee um, with the Brain Octane, the upgraded coffee, and two tablespoons of butter, and I had some hard-boiled eggs. Um for lunch, I had another cup of coffee. Today was kind of unusual that I was hungry and uh, my mom came over for, for lunch. And so I made a salad with, I put um, some smoked whitefish on, on the top, uh, cut up some pieces of smoked mozzarella. There was a very small amount of diced tomatoes and I said two cups of salad. I also put on, which I left off, some apple cider vinegar and olive oil. Okay, that was my lunch and dinner. So there should be even more fat today. Uh, dinner was, I made uh, sandwiches, but instead of um, using bread or anything similar to bread, I used uh, romaine lettuce leaves. And I had two sandwiches one with uh, uh, like a slice and a half of corned beef and the other one had two slices of brisket and that was my dinner. So we come down and we see that today was 83.5% fat um, and 14% um, protein in numbers. Uh, my carbs were 14 or 10 net carbs. The protein was 63 grams and the fat is 164 grams. That is how you stay in keto. Now, let's stop and take questions only on tracking. Okay. I see that Lori had one which was so a minimum grams of fat equal to grams of protein but you can have more if you're hungry yes that is exactly right so um often on keto you might not be super hungry i get this question a lot and it has to do with that it's fine to be a little under on protein you just don't want to be consistently way under you want to be like in a range around your desired protein and you never want to go below the number of grams of fat that you've gone in protein, but if you're hungry, you can always eat more fat. So you scale that fat to be satisfied and not hungry. Any other questions about tracking or issues you have with tracking? This would be a good time to head over to the right-hand corner of the screen where there are questions. I cannot get a net carbs to show up on my fitness pal. How are you doing it? Okay, so what you want to do is you want to come to our friend Google and go to YouTube. And in YouTube is you type in track net carbs on my fitness pal. There you go. And there are many, many videos on exactly how to do that. It'll take you about five minutes, but it's something that you have to do on your computer. Uh, it's not something that you can do on the phone. The really weird thing is that my fitness pal gets asked this all the time, and they keep saying no. They don't think there's an interest. Only um, all these people who are interested in keto asking for it. But on your computer, it's... It's a relatively simple thing to do. Take about five minutes. The best thing that we can do is send you to one of these uh, videos 
and it make life very easy for you. Um, did I pay the extra fee to upgrade my fitness pal? I did. I'm not even sure if it's worth it. Um, I, I have, and I have not, and I have not found a lot of extra benefit for it, but then you get lazy and you forget to cancel your subscription. Yeah, I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we don't care about calories, correct? Uh, but I don't, no, we don't. The, the answer to that is really very, very simple. Part of the mindset of the of the dieting and of the weight loss industry is the old thing of calories in and calories out. It, it is so entrenched in the mentality of the dieter to track calories that people think that we're from Mars when we say it's not really important. You see, if you're doing keto correctly, it is really, really hard to eat too much food. The almost universal response to people doing keto correctly is, I'm full. I can't eat. And that is where we want you to get to, where you don't eat by what your calories say. You learn to eat by whether you're hungry or not. And when you can do that, see, most eating is done subconscious. It is done, the food is in front of you, and you eat. And you eat, maybe you're distracted by what's on television, maybe you're distracted by what's on the phone, but you're not paying attention to the sensation of eating and are you full. This happens on keto a lot, okay? So the bottom line is that you should really be tracking and you should be paying attention. But what you should be paying attention to are your, um, are, are, your, are your settings, are your, your, your macros, what you're tracking what your goals are. And here the goals are, one more time, 5% carbohydrates, 15% protein, 80% fat. And I try to really make sure that I'm above that. Now, a lot of people, when you do that, um, you're going to start to see, first of all, we see many, many times in the group people saying, I feel guilty about the fat. Yes, congratulations, you are a victim of the weight loss industry. Yes, they, you are. They've convinced everybody that the culprit is fat. If you go back and you do some studies, you will discover um, you will discover that the way that fat became the culprit was because of something that was done by the sugar industry. They wanted to distract everybody from the problem of uh, what was really going on with sugar. And so they invented a culprit called fat. And the bottom line is that we want you to understand that, um, that fat is your friend. It is not the problem. Fat is going to help you get rid of fat. Okay, so mistake number one is that people are not tracking. And almost invariably, if you are not tracking, you are going to mess up. Don't think that you can do this by approximation. There are days that you'll go in there and you'll be out to eat and you'll say, oh, well, I can have a steak. Steaks aren't a problem. And then you'll find out like, Oh my gosh, look at all the protein that I just had. And then your macros go straight to HE double hockey stick that day because you're thinking, oh my God, how am I going to do that? So mistake number one is you're not tracking or you don't know what you're tracking. Um, if you're stuck, then track carbs and not net carbs.
and you'll start to see a change. But that is the single biggest mistake. So when someone comes into the group and they're not losing weight, the first thing that you'll ask, you'll see Kim or I ask is, post your tracking, post what you're eating. And what we want to see is not necessarily the menu of what you've had that day. This is what we want to see. We want to see what your um, what your carbs are. We want to see uh, what your protein is, and we want to see what your fat is. And in just a single glance at that, we'll know. Now there are times that these numbers will be correct. And then we'll want to take a deeper look. And the reason that is because sometimes people do things that although the numbers appear to work out, they're really ingesting things that they shouldn't ingest and they're throwing you out of keto. So for example, I've discovered that my body is hypersensitive to wine. And if I have wine, it's going to boot me out of keto sometimes for a week. And I could be, you know, before that, I could be eating perfectly. After that, I could eat uh, perfectly for a week. And yet, wine is so, my body is so insulin resistant that it throws me out of keto, even though I'm drinking uh, what would be considered a keto-friendly wine, one with extremely low sugar. So very often, there are things that you may be doing that you might pay no attention to. You may think that the numbers are okay. Like numbers-wise, my wine should be okay. I'm having maybe two, uh, two carbs worth of wine, three carbs worth of wine. But it wreaks havoc with my system, and therefore um, it's a no-no for me. If I have it once on occasion, I know I'm trading off a week of, uh, of going out of, of keto. Anything to say on tracking, Kim, before we move on? Well, yeah, I just wanted to reiterate that when I, so I gave the calculation for protein, that is something you don't want to go over, at least by much. You know, if you're like two to three grams over, no one's dying. But um, excess protein is anti-ketogenic. Um, you don't want to be too far under now, if I have an occasional day of 40 grams instead of my 60-something grams, that's no big deal, totally fine. But you want to make sure you're at least within, you know, about 20% of it on the low end and you don't want to be much over it because you do need protein for your bodily processes. It's how you rebuild your cells and your muscles, and so you need it, but you don't need too much. You just need enough. And so I just wanted to clarify that the protein – like you don't need any carbs. Carbs are more for entertainment. Um, <laughs> protein you need are essential. You need them to rebuild your body and you also need fat to fuel your body. Um, but protein is not super variable, but fat is depending on hunger. Okay. Um, I'm just thinking about what, what you said there. Um, I'm going to say that this is the number one issue that we see with people is that they're just not um they're just not tracking and when you don't track you don't get results. So right. track 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 for success. One more thing on this that I want to say is that there are people of all kinds of advanced levels in the group. Yeah. There, there are all kinds of different levels. Some people more advanced. Some people have been doing keto for for more than a year, and you know, when I'm I'm five thousand pounds down and so forth. And they're talking about fasting and things like that. We're recommending that everybody go at their own pace. Don't try to rush this thing. Okay, yeah. just go ahead and do your own pace. And if you do your own pace, you're going to get your results. But really, there is no competition for speed. This, as we're going to talk about later, this is a way of life. This is not to be a quick fix. But if you've been on it for a while and you've stalled and you've stalled for a while, um, we want you to get back to the basics. Okay, 
Let's go on to mistake number two, and that is using keto strips to test. <laughs> keto strips are... These are the pea strips, right? Yes, these so are the pea know. strips, okay? Um, you want to know if you're in ketosis. We understand that. And the most common way and the cheapest way to find out if you're in ketosis is to hold these little keto strips and pee on them. And everybody is, you know, hey, my strip showed this, it's this color, it's this kind of pink, uh, or you're looking at it and, and it hasn't changed color, what does that mean? Uh, it changed colors, now it's all of the colors of the rainbow, what does that mean? The, the bottom line is that the keto strips are completely inaccurate. The keto strips can show that you're in ketosis when you're not in ketosis, and they can show that you're not in ketosis when you are in ketosis. The keto strips got their popularity during from the Atkins diet. Atkins advised people to use keto strips, but they are just deadly inaccurate. And the reason they are used today has been handed down like, oh, you want to know if you're in uh, ketosis? Use keto strips. And the problem there is just complete inaccuracy. So there are three ways to check if you are in keto. One are the keto strips. We've just told you they are inaccurate. So when anybody posts a picture of their keto strip, and yes, we all do enjoy seeing the strip that you've peed on, um, we go ahead and post it, but we're going to respond and tell you that you should completely disregard the information there as being inaccurate. And that inaccurate accuracy is going to cost you and because you don't really know what you're doing. The most accurate way is, um, is te of testing yourself is testing yourself with the uh, keto meter, which is a blood meter. What this is, this is, it's mostly used by diabetics. And the, what, what it is, it has a little, I'm, I'm actually holding my kit right now. It, now a lancet. It comes with a lancet, which is something that, it's a spring-loaded thing. You put a little pin in it, a special pin in it. You put it against the side of your finger, and you let fly, and you go, ouch. It, doesn't hurt all that much. And you have special um, strips. The ones I'm holding are Precision Extra Blood Ketone Strips. You can get them on Amazon. Here's the problem. These machines are designed for diabetics who, uh, there is something that is not ketosis, it's called ketoacidosis. So these machines are to make sure that diabetics are able to check their sugar and to make sure that they are not in this bad condition called ketoacidosis. It has nothing to do with ketosis, nothing. Uh, many doctors, when they hear ketosis, think of their training of ketoacidosis, and they go, oh, no, that's terrible. Stay away from it. Um, they're confused, and they don't know what they're talking about. And if you give them something intelligent to read about it, they'll go, oh, I'm sorry, never mind. Um, the problem is that for most people who are diabetic using this equipment, these machines are given to them by their doctors, and they have a prescription for those uh, ketone test strips, meaning someone is paying for it, not them. The companies refuse to acknowledge that there is a market of people interested in ketosis. And these strips are extremely expensive. Uh, so 10 strips could cost you between 5 and 10 bucks. 
Um, and you need, you know, if you want to test yourself every day, those numbers add up. So keto strips, you pee on them, but they're not accurate. Blood testing, uh, you use the Lancet, get some blood, put it on the strip, put it in the machine. It tells you very, very quickly what your uh, level of ketones in your blood are. And then there's breath testing. Breath testing is right now, there are two machines. The only one really worth looking at is Ketonics. Keto is growing so quickly that he can't, can barely even keep them in stock. And um, there's the URL for the Ketonics. When you get one of these puppies, you can connect it from your computer. You can travel with it. You set up a profile on it. So if there's more, if let's say if you're a couple and both you and your husband are doing keto, you set up a profile for uh, both of you and it tracks what you are doing. Um, anything more about testing, Kim, that you want to add? No, I, I, um, I personally test with both the blood and the breath because my clients require that I know a lot of things so that I, I will test with both. And I will tell you that with, if you get a ketonics, there is an upfront cost, but I spend in a month on blood testing supplies, what I would spend on the upfront cost for the, for the ketonics machine. And so within a very short period of time, you, you, you're ahead of the game with breath testing. Um, because it's not a per use cost. And so that's one of the major benefits of, um, of the ketonics. Okay. Any questions on testing? Okay. Lori says, so my diabetic strips will not tell you if you are in ketosis. That is correct. There, so the, the precision extra is the machine in the United States that will test both glucose and ketones, but you need a different strip to do each. So the machine will do both, but you need different in strips to bleed on. <laughs> um, because So you can have one machine, two types of strips, you can test both. But if you just have a glucose testing machine, that won't test ketones unless it's this specific machine. Okay. Um, are there any questions there? Additional questions? I don't see anything else on testing. Okay, then we're going to go on to part three. And mistake number three, and this is the one that we feel badly <laughs> about. We, we, we really feel badly about this, and we kick out people in the group on a daily basis about this. And these are the keto drinks. These are super, super expensive drinks that the companies tell you these company, these products will um, will put, put you in, ket in ketosis in a minute, in two minutes, and so forth. And the truth of the matter is that. We're going to take a look at the ingredients to one of these keto drinks. They're all about the same. And we're going to show you how they work and why they are probably the biggest single fraud perpetrated on the um, ketosis, people interested in ketosis. So totally here, agree. Here are the ingredients, okay? This is from a product called Keto OS. Now, if you're going to ask us, uh, are any of these products better than um, the others, we're going to turn around and ask you, are any of these products worse than any of the others? Because <laughs> there is nothing good about them. But you do get three extra carbs with it there, Arlen. Um, wow. Yes. Well, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Three extra carbs. So – what these things do, as we go through the ingredients, the only ingredient 
that you have is the one that counts is beta hydroxybutyrate, which is one of the forms of ketones. So let me explain this to you, folks. You are drinking, the, the ketones come in a powder. Every single powder, they are ketones and salt. And these drinks universally taste awful. If anyone tells you, oh, I drink this keto product every day and it's delicious, their nose just grew by a yard. Okay? These things are awful. They are super expensive. It is typical that a large container of these keto things will end up costing you hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So what they say is, drink this and you will be in keto in 30 minutes, one minute, whatever it is, you will be in keto. And that's the first lie. You are not in ketosis. You have ketones in your body because you just drank them. Okay? <laughs> let, let me give you an example. Let's say you managed to find liquid uranium and you drank it. Well, then you would have liquid uranium in your body and you would test on a Geiger counter that you have uranium in it. It doesn't make you a nuclear bomb. It just means <laughs> you have uranium in your body. Putting ketones in your body means that your body is going to show the presence of ketones. You are not in nutritional ketosis. So let me go through some of the big lies that this will speed your weight loss. Absolutely nonsense. Um, another thing, that if you take carbs, you have too many carbs that day, this will make up for it. So you can go on your birthday, you can have a big piece of birthday cake, and then drink these keto drinks, and they will put you back in ketosis. No, they won't. They are just dumping ketones in your system. When you pee, you will show that there are ketones, but you are not in ketosis. There is a difference, a huge difference. When you start legitimately doing keto and you um, cut out the carbohydrates, your body and you cut back on your protein, your body legitimately starts manufacturing ketones. It takes anywhere from seven days, depending on the individual, to as much as three weeks to go into nutritional ketosis. Having this drink does absolutely nothing. It doesn't make you lighter. It makes your wallet lighter. And the fact is that you've joined our group. We feel a sense of responsibility towards you so that you do not get ripped off by the people who, um, who advocate that you uh, use these products. Generally, the people who post about these products want you to message them so that they can introduce you to these wonders of products. They will tell you how wonderful they are, how quickly you're going to lose weight, because these products put you in ketosis. I want you to know this is the worst of the keto mistakes because it's expensive. Um, and for what you would spend on a typical order to get started with what they'll sell you and when things are on sale, etc., you could buy a ketonics and be testing yourself simply and accurately without being ripped off. So sometimes... Yeah. what. It, when we say we're kicking spammers out of the group, almost invariably 
it's um, it, uh, almost invariably it's because they're posting uh, links or they're giving testimonials about how many pounds that they've lost um, with um, uh, using the keto drinks. And we know that they're just interested in taking advantage of you. And we are going to continue to delete them um, and and try and do our best to to keep you away from this nonsense because it's just not true. Okay, so yeah. Well, I can just really quick, Harlan, if I could just say one more thing about these drinks. You can these say drinks. two more things about these drinks. Awesome. Which is, I just wanted people to know, and I, Harlan did an awesome job of, of explaining it, but I want to give a little bit of the science about why you don't want this. So the state of ketosis is you enter ketosis when you've used up your body's glycogen storage, right? You have no more glucose and that signals your body, you no more ingested glucose, I should say. That signals your body to enter a state of suppressed insulin. And when you go into a state of suppressed insulin, it mobilizes your body's fatty acids. That's the fat on your body. You want that mobilized. Now, what happens is then your ketones go up. So the fatty acids in your body get mobilized for energy because it doesn't have glucose, still needs energy, mobilizes the fat in your body as energy, burns it for energy. It's like the best of all worlds. And so ketone testing is a proxy to confirm that you're in this state. Now, if you're ingesting beta hydroxybutyrate, you have no more way of knowing if your body is in the optimal fat burning zone. So you're taking this drink that's tricking your body into thinking or tricking your testing into thinking, oh yeah, I'm totally, I got this. I'm in this state of optimal fat burning. But it's not the ketones themselves that are burning the fat. It's that you're making ketones out of your body fat. It's no, so when you're drinking the ketones, you're not doing that. So it's not to say that there is absolutely never, ever an application for ingesting ketones. If you have cancer, if you have a neurological disease, if you have Alzheimer's, there are if you have the bends, there are places where added beta hydroxybutyrate might be helpful. Fat loss desire is not one of them. That's my rant, Harlan. That's fine. Um, okay, so are there any questions that you have about the ketone products? And if it doesn't work, you need to buy more. So uh, that is correct, uh, Doug. Now, people have been messaging. What you can do, we, we want to keep... Um, um, Uh, you want to uh, keep your eye out for these things. If you see something in this in the group that is about their products and someone talking about how phenomenal they are, um, I just removed somebody who um, who today who when I looked at the people we've removed and blocked from the group, I previously removed her and she keeps joining with different names. Oh God! Uh, because so they could spam the group. You would do us a favor, go over to in the upper right hand corner, there's a little arrow, and you could say flag this post, and that will notify Kim and I that there is an issue and we will deal with it. Um and you like the nuclear bomb in, info. Thank you, Mara. <laughs> and and the, the science info from Kim. Yes. Um we, we really want to make sure that you that you succeed. And we feel that going down the path of these products is only going to um, um, is only going to cause you problems. So um, the bottom line is um, we. Um,
Okay. Um, here's actually a question on it. Jody says, I've heard that if someone is super insulin resistant, exogenous ketones, in other words, the ketone drinks, helps lower the insulin spikes. Dr. Nally says this, just curious. So I have, I have a lot of respect for Dr. Nally. I actually use his protein calculator often to come up with how much protein to feed people. Um, and I respectfully disagree. He is a big proponent and a seller of the Keto OS product. He's one of their representatives and he has a contract with them to sell them and advertise for them. And, um, and I'm not saying, you know, that that necessarily means his information isn't accurate, but what I am saying is um, it does raise a question for me about it. And the reality is that um, a lot of other doctors, Dr. Beekman, Dr. Unfeld, they've proposed that um, you never get a state of high insulin with high ketones in nature. Uh, ketones are a form of energy, right? And if you have high energy in the presence of high insulin, which would be what would happen if you're taking exogenous ketones while also being in a high carbohydrate state. It, there is speculation that that is a, such an unnatural state for your body to be in that it will cause fat gain and increased insulin resistance. So it's an area in which there are some questions. There does need to be a lot more testing. There is not um, strong proof that any of these exogenous ketones do anything beneficial on the fat loss side um, beyond some some incredibly promising results about neurological diseases. Um, so it's not as if there's no uh, benefit in any sphere, but um, I just feel very strongly that what you want is to mobilize your own body's fatty acid storage, not to introduce an exogenous supply of beta hydroxybutyrate. It's you want to mobilize your own fat for energy because that is going to result in fat loss. And when you drink this easy source of energy, you know, what's going to happen? Is that really going to allow for such good mobilization? I have some serious doubts. Now, one of the people that I am friends with on Facebook is Dave Asprey. Dave is the founder of Bulletproof and has been a leading researcher almost to the point of being neurotic about getting information. And I asked Dave about the ketone drinks and I'm reading his answer. The ketone salt drinks contain 50% isomers that are not bioidentical. One of the top keto researchers on the planet, Dr. Veach, explained on Bulletproof Radio that they cause mitochondrial damage. Others believe they do not. I would not regularly use a salt product, meaning one of these keto drinks, unless it was bioidentical 100%. There are currently, currently none on the market that do that. I would love to offer one, but there's a lot we don't know about how these are metabolized. Since brain octane oil raises or MCT oil raises ketones directly in a similar similar method I am not seeing the sense of taking the risk risk in other words if you want a drink that is going to help put you into ketosis you could use bulletproof coffee or tea take the um, the MCT oil or the brain oil and you will get there without getting ripped off Okay, now we're going to move to the part about where we take regular questions about what's going on with you. You can type them in there, and Kim or I will see your questions and answer them. So um, what's an example of eating something with fat when you are hungry without adding too much protein? Well, I happen to like the taste of coconut oil. Um, it happens to be, uh, uh, I like the taste of coconut, and I will keep a jar of coconut oil. Remember, at room temperature, it's a solid. And to me, taking a spoonful of that and eating it, it's, it's like a treat. 
um, and I will have that. There are things that um, that people eat that are called fat bombs. Fat bombs are basically a fat and some kind of um, of, of sweetener and a flavoring. Um, these directly raise your fats. There is a chocolate bar that I recommend if it's okay with your system. And you can see them on our page, completelyketo.com. Completely Keto, those are the Choco Perfection bar, Bars. Those are the links there. There are different flavors of the bars. There is no one who has found that they don't um, taste delicious. Um, we recommend that you test them to see how your body responds to it. Um, in a bar, if you're tracking net carbs, there are 2 grams of carbs in the bar, 14 grams of fiber. So they have a negligible effect on your carbs. Um, they are very, very high in fat, and they can give you a boost. However, I recommend that you start with those chocolate bars slowly so you can get your body to uh, test them. If you go and say, mmm, chocolate bars, I'm going to have three, you will be cursing my name the next day because your tummy is going to fight back and go, no, don't do three at one time. That would be bad. Okay. So yeah. that, that would be, that would be really bad. So the, the easiest ways are fat bombs. Um, get yourself a measured portion of nuts. If you, if there's a Trader Joe's near you, they have almonds and pre-measured packets. Um, and you could have one of those packets. Those are good in fat. Uh, nut butters are good. Um, or make yourself another cup of bulletproof. And yeah, and I also I also like to encourage people. Like people often ask this question, like how do I how do I have fat? You know, how do I get more fat? Like I plan my eating out for the day in advance, which includes meals, which include protein and a lot of fat. So you should be able to, after a good keto meal, to go at least five hours without being hungry at all. So if you're finding, and this is once you're fat adapted, which is about a month or two into the process, but so, so it's, if you're finding you're constantly scrambling to add more fat, like you failed to properly plan your day and keto is a way of life. I, you know, at this point, I don't have to constantly add, quote, add fat because I eat a fatty diet. My diet includes fat as a natural part of all the foods that I eat. And so, you know, if you're working properly on creating a well-formulated ketogenic eating plan, which is what I work with all my clients on to make sure that they're doing, it just doesn't, it's just not a problem. You're not finding yourself stuck with needing more fat on a regular basis. That's a pretty good answer. Um, <laughs> that's a pretty good answer. So basically, it's plan and you won't have a problem. Okay, Michelle, after success on a low carb in 2000, lost 80 pounds, then I went off and went back on 2005 while pregnant because of a diabetic condition caused by pregnancy. Wow, this is a long message. I was overweight before pregnancy, but doing low carb, I managed my insulin. I did not even gain five pounds through the nine months. Went back off low carb until 2009 while I finally committed, and I've been low carb ever since. I'm down 60 pounds from 2009, but I'm at plateau for years. Recently went through menopause, which caused me to even gain 10 to 15 pounds. It's been terribly hard to get off. I've been trying to eat more, thinking that that was my protein because I do not get hungry very often. I'm now learning about keto. Oh, God. Uh, and feel it'll be an easy transition from low carb. Very interesting about the protein because I believed I needed to eat more of that. My question is, I go 24 hours often longer. I don't know what that means. You go 24 hours. I think he doesn't eat for 24 hours sometimes. Okay. Um, is that okay? Can I go very long periods without eating? I'm not hungry without it interfering with keto. Okay. Keep yes, you're fasting. <laughs> so if you go 24 hours without eating, you are having a 24 hour fast. That is fine. Some people eat one meal a day. Some people eat every other day. Um, fasting is a totally valid approach if you're not hungry. 
It's never something you should force if you tend to get hungry, but there's really no problem with regular fasting as long as you're doing sort of what I call the fast feast cycle. So some days you don't eat or you don't maybe don't eat for several days, but then when you are eating, you are making sure that you're getting a fair amount of food and nutrients in your body. So you're cycling through eating and not eating. You don't want to just fast, not eat, fast some more, not eat some more. It, it's just you want to have some ebb and flow in the cycle. Okay. Um, and we're seeing people post very often about um, they think that they – that it's going to help them to do uh, pig out days and go completely off keto and load up on carbs and it's going to shock no, no, them. No, no. The f when I say feasting, I don't mean a carb up. A carb up is like the worst thing you can do to an insulin resistant person. Um, I mean, just making sure you're eating good, solid keto foods that include nice fat. Okay, but yeah. day, the, the idea that you can take a pizza day and then no. to help you with it <laughs> is, um, it's wishful thinking is what it is by the people that are still addicted to carbohydrates. Yeah. It's, it's not going to help you. No. Okay. Um, there we go. Um, had blood testing done, discovered my fasting insulin is at 19 should be eight or below. This signals some major insulin resistance. So maybe why I've had trouble losing weight. Yes. Um, any ideas how to further get that insulin level down? Um, yes. Yes, follow the keto diet. Fo follow yes. what we've talked about tonight. If you're doing that, post your stuff in the group. Yeah, you uh, both key, the ketogenic diet and fasting, as they asked here about fasting, those both are ways to lower your insulin. A combination of the two is a great way to do it. And yes, 19 is a level at which you definitely have some insulin resistance going on. Okay. You posted something about uh, keto. You posted a picture of about a drink today, Kim. What was that all about? Because people uh, talk about keto uh, drinks with protein, 21 fat, three carbs, stevia, MCT oil, coconut cream, powdered eggs, and whey. Are those a quick breakfast? Can whey spike insulin? Oh, I see. Um, uh, no, uh, I would not. In, I, if you have any insulin resistance in any way, shape, or form, I would stay very far away from whey protein drinks of any kind. Um, it is, uh, so whey protein will rapidly spike most people's insulin. So I tried a whey protein drink while I was in ketosis. And these effects are actually more noticeable in ketosis. It's not that they're worse, it's just that now you can feel hunger more strongly or not hungry. So I had a whey protein drink early in ketosis and 30 minutes later, I was like eating the molding, like the, 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 the wood off of my doors. I was starving. So um, I got a really rapid um, insulin response from, from whey protein. I do not suggest it in any way. I tell people really honestly, stay away from shakes, stay away from smoothies, even if they're not the crappy keto products, um, eat real food. Okay. Uh, what kind of coconut oil? Mine does not have any taste. Listen, I happen to like it, whether you think it has tastes or not. I don't think there's a particular kind. Uh, I, I think essentially all um, coconut oils are pretty much the same. They have, have ver extra virgin coconut oils um, or organic coconut oils. Um, bottom line is uh, just pick one and do it. Look for some fat bomb recipes, Google fat bomb recipes, and you'll be fine. Okay. So here's a question that Norman had that uh, I wanted to, to clarify, um, which is if you mess up on protein, should you force yourself to eat more of the other macros to make your ratios right? This is a super important point. The macro ratios are for you to figure out the appropriate grams for you to eat. It's not that the ratios themselves are the thing. They're just a get, they're just a double check. But you do not uneat extra protein or extra carbs by eating more fat. Just because the ratio comes out right at the end of the day 
your body does not care. It's the, it's the grams in terms of protein and carbs that your body cares about. If you eat too much protein, try to do better tomorrow. Don't try and cover it up by eating more fat, certainly not more fat than you're hungry for. That won't work. Okay. Um, now, even though we promised that this was three mistakes, they're really more than three mistakes. And we decided with your permission to go on. And I'm going to tell you that we are guilty of using the term keto diet, but traditionally people talk about a diet being something that is done for a short period of time and then they will go off of their diet. I'm either on my diet, I went off my diet, I'm cheating on my diet. Um, the bottom line is that. It's not a diet. The truth of the matter is that you want to be, you want to do ketosis. And the, um, you want to do ketosis and that's it. You want to stay on ketosis for the rest of your life. This is a major commitment. But if you decide that I'm going to do this, I'm going to lose my weight. And I'm going to go back and start eating carbs again, like I used to, because now I've lost the weight. The pounds are just hanging around, waiting to see if this happens. And if you do that, they are going to jump back on for the ride. Now, when the people who are on a stall, they say they've been on a plateau, one woman wrote that she's been on a plateau for more than a year, it tells me that this person needs some extra attention. They're doing things at this point almost automatically, and they've probably allowed a mistake or two, and, and they're not aware of what they're doing. And we find that when someone else takes a look at what we're doing or makes suggestions, we discover all kinds of new things. For me, I'm discovering that one of the biggest shockers to me was that foods I considered extremely healthy from my previous life weren't necessarily the most healthy in the keto place. I would go to a, a Chinese restaurant that was vegan. And my favorite dish there was their imitation beef and broccoli. And they would send out um, a portion of beef and broccoli and like, hey, it's great. It's, it's, it's soy and it's, um, and it's broccoli. And what could be bad about broccoli? And then I found out the carb content of broccoli. And all the times that I would go into a restaurant and think I was being, quote, good by telling them, no thanks, no potatoes, no french fries, but give me an extra portion of broccoli. Um, no. The bottom line is, that if you're doing something and you're not seeing results, chances are you're doing something wrong. And you may need some extra help. So the first thing is don't think of this as a diet. Think of this as a way of life. You're not doing this for a specific purpose. And I know that this is conflicts with the dieting mindset. But honestly, this is one of the biggest things that we find is that people want to do this they're looking for quick weight loss. And when they hit a stall, they're gone looking for the next method. I promise you, Kim promises you, that if you are doing this and you are stuck, there's a reason to be stuck and we want to help you. Now, the problem that we have, the problem that we have is that in a group of 7,000 people, or 8,000 people now in a few moments, um, 
in a group of 8,000 people who are posting, it is nearly impossible. Every time I go over to my um, computer, <laughs> somebody just reported your post, Kim. Nice. I'm a, I'm a scofflaw. You're a scofflaw. Um, there are now 8,000 members in our group. We are happy to have you in our group. We are delighted to have you in our group. But sometimes I'll be going through the group and I'll see that there are posts that people put up there that we just never saw. We're not ignoring you. We're not picking favorites, whatever. In a group of 8,000 people that is as active as this group is, where hundreds of people are posting every day, which we love, by the way, it is invariable that we're not going to see you. And we may miss that you've done, you've posted your stuff and you're not getting results. You're not getting results and you're not getting answers and you may get frustrated. You may get angry at us. But the bottom line is it's just impossible to give people the individual attention that they need. And that's why we've decided to start a coaching group. The coaching group is going to start next week after Easter. Starting before Easter, we think we'd set people up for failure because it's this day that people have their habits. I remember in my, um, uh, in my hypnosis program, I had a client who was so successful and he was losing weight. He was a star. This guy was a star. And then Christmas came and he said to me, see you in January. I'm done now with my weight loss. I said, what does that mean? He said, Harlan, I've got to eat Christmas cookies. My wife bakes 16 different kinds of cookies, and I have to have every one. And I just looked at him and shook my head and said, no, you don't. But I lost. So we're going to start next week working with people in a very, very small group where we're going to get you results in a period of time of eight weeks. In this period of time, we are going to do the following. We're going to get you started with the numbers of keto. Now, we said that everybody is a little different. We're going to help you figure out exactly what your macros should be. But we're also going to help you take the measurements of keto so that you know exactly what's going on in your body. We want you to understand exactly what your macros are and how to get them on a daily basis. It's not so simple until you've been in it for a while. And if you're not where you are, you might want to consider this. Day-to-day -day support, where in a small group, we are going to see your posts. We are going to respond to you, and we are going to help you correct any problems that arise before it becomes a difficulty. Next, accountability. We're going to hold your feet to the fire, so to speak. And it's the only way to get go goals. We want to be your cheering squad, but the bottom line is you're coming to us because we want results. You want results. We want to get you there. And people are always asking for recipes. What should I eat? Kim and I will put together recipes for you on a weekly basis that you can adapt, you can pick, you can choose. Very, very simple things um, that will keep you in uh, keto and you'll know what to cook and when. Uh, you'll be able to substitute out and make sure that you're staying within your macros. Recipes is one of the most um, desired things that people are asking us to post weeks and weeks of recipes. But frankly, it's a lot of effort. And as you know, um, running this group is a labor of love for us. So for us to take and start spending hours, more hours than we're already doing, um, and work with people individually and get them their results, we've decided to put together this coaching program. And the most important aspect is 
that all success begins in your mind. How to maintain the success when you um, are dejected, when the scale isn't moving and you've been in a stall for three weeks and you can't figure out what's going on, will help you maintain your motivation to succeed. That is what we want for you. And in eight weeks, we think that we can help you break through whatever is causing a stall. We think we can help you get started on the right path by giving you individual attention. Now, this is ideal if you have um, a good deal of weight to lose. If you are looking to lose upwards of 50 pounds, this is what I would do. Um, what we want to do is basically we want to have a small group of superstars. And then we'll come back and we're going to raise the prices substantially because we will have the proven track record. I don't have the testimonials that I had from years ago of uh, Nicole, who I helped her lose well over 100 pounds and all of their names. I, I have their files someplace. But the bottom line is we're new to you guys. We want a small group of superstars that we're going to help get started. And then we're going to come back with their stories and show you that we can do it for you too. So for the initial groups, we are keeping the prices low. Now, if you have ever done a weight loss program, if you have ever do done something like Jenny Craig and bought the meals or bought weight loss coaching, you will probably laugh when you see the price that we're asking for the program because it is so unbelievably inexpensive. We are only doing this the one time. If you want to go ahead and take a look at what we are offering, go ahead here. I'm going to put it in the chat box so you can click the link and you will see. We've even offered two ways to do this. One with a uh, paid in full and save a hundred bucks or um, the other one to, um, to do two simple payments it is less expensive than any weight loss coaching program that we've ever seen for the level of attention and the level of time that you are getting someone wrote in to me and said i paid thousands for something like this there are no thousands involved go take a look if it works for you we want to start with you next week so go ahead Get on board, and we look forward to seeing you in our little group. There is a small Facebook group. Everything will be in the group, weekly webinars. Um, and there it is. So Lori says, sign me and my husband up. Shannon says, sign me up. There it is. There's the link, completelyketo.com. Join. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that if you are – a woman and your husband wants you want to do it with your husband uh we will let you both in at that one price okay because it's important that you support one another so i didn't even ask kim about that i'm just doing it now kim can beat me up later but it is important for us that you guys join kim any final words about what you're looking forward to in the group well, you know, I like my life is transformed by helping other people transform theirs and keto changed my world from one where I had basically lost hope that I was ever going to be in a healthy body and where I, I felt like I was on a downward spiral. And now I'm just like happy to be alive. I'm happy to have a body. I love my body, you know, everything about it. And I can't wait to bring that same joy and satisfaction to this new group of people. It's very exciting. We are looking forward to things. Um, one thing that's one of the benefits of keto is that when you do it correctly, you start feeling extra energy. And we understand that people in, in keto, you know, maybe they aren't working out like they should. Well, Kim has got a friend who is going to be doing some very, very simple exercises with um, with us 
making some videos that just about anybody can do to start moving your body. So the bottom line is we would love to help you. It's going to be a small group, lots of attention. To us, we just want your results. So go ahead, sign up now, and we'll get you the information tomorrow about joining the group and getting your results. We look forward to, um, I see two people have already joined. Um, we look forward to um, more people joining and, um, uh, and getting you your results. And then we will be back to brag about those results <laughs> in eight weeks. Thanks for joining. That's right. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great night. Good night.